Marjorie. Conniving. Edmure. Alive. Yara. Pansexual. Davos. Convincing. The Hound. Lumberjack. Yeah. As long as I'm standing, the war is not over. Our two ancient houses face collapse because of your stupidity. I did what I had to do to survive. I will always be a Stark. We're gonna take back the Iron Islands. Then we'll get revenge. He died for us. If we are not willing to do the same for him, we're cowards. The real war is between the living and the dead. And make no mistake, the dead are coming. Hello again, welcome to Game of Thrones Fan vs. Fan for episode 607. I'm Joe Minty. I'm Brian Crosby. And we're going to tell you everything you need to know about life. <laughs> Alright, Brian. So, this episode, what did you think was the cream of the crop? Well, all the hound stuff, I think, was, was the good stuff. Oh. Was my favorite part of, he definitely does that in the show. He uh, should. Yeah, he should. If he doesn't, if he becomes a superhero later on, I'll start howling. <laughs> if they bring him, if he dies and comes back as a half man, half wolf thing, <laughs> he'll have a catchphrase where he howls at the moon. The thing that I appreciated about it the most was Game of Thrones actually managed to fit a whole narrative into a single episode. Yeah, they wanted to emphasize uh, that this was the central theme of the episode was uh, to do with the Hound. Uh, and his changing story by having the intro come in a minute late, right? And the first thing you yeah. notice is it doesn't start with the epic theme song no. and all of the cool little miniatures popping up and I immediately go, wait, something's going on. And then everything's peaceful and happy and you're like, something's doubly <laughs> going on. I couldn't believe then too though, is it starts to pan up somebody and you're like, okay, this is it. It's going to be someone. I thought it was going to be Gendry. Right. And I was like, all right. This, you know, he's, he's strong, too. He can sure. carry a big tree. And he's yeah. been he's, he's been living like a yeah. peaceful dude. Sure. And someone's going to come and find him and be like, you got King's blood and go after him or something. And then, yeah. and then it was a hound. And that's mm. really cool. That's something, obviously, cool. book people know nothing about. The, uh, the hound was just left for dead, uh, just like he was on the show. I don't think show. anyone was expecting to see him again. I was expecting it a little, but only from internet stuff that I'd heard. Yeah, we did talk Not about it. Not through legitimate reason yeah. through the show, uh, all, except for the fact that, you know, if you see someone, if you if, if you have a character not quite die in Act 1, mm -hmm. have them relive in Act 3 as a general principle of filmmaking, right? Where it's yeah. like the people who are dead, you see the, their viscera all over the place in Game of Thrones. Yeah, so, well, I think you and I talked about it a little bit um, last week off camera. That there were some internet theories you had read about people. I don't know how any... Uh, this is all just stuff that people invented. So uh, it's not like spoilers, but there no. are these ideas that maybe somehow the Hound would be alive. I don't know why they come up with it. And maybe the mountain would somehow end up moving north and there would be a final... Some sort of clash. Who there's, knows? there's unfinished business there, Unfinished right? business, yeah. Like, like the scene between the Hound and Brienne when they fought and Arya left the Hound, that, that finished Arya and the Hound's business. If it they did. never meet again, I'm fine. Yeah. But the Hound has unfinished business with his brother. I yeah. liked this arc. I like the great. idea that he was just like, I'm done with this. I'm going to just be separate. I'm going to put my work into the labor. And then what happens in situations like this in a world like Westeros is it only lasts so long. I think that why, the reason why we like the Hound is that you can tell that he's sort of a good guy at heart. He's a good guy who lives in a bad world and he recognizes that. He recognizes that you have to do things you don't want to do in order to survive. Yeah. But if you put him in a situation in which he didn't feel those threats, then he would probably be an okay dude. And we saw that for a period of time. Well, and, and I mean, the main things that he's done wrong were principally while he was just kind of like myopic and working for Joffrey. Right. Which is, of course, a, a recipe for you to do. Yeah, well, get yeah, your he's, hands dirty, he's gotta, right? He's got to... Yeah, he's got to get his hands dirty. He's got to do this job in order for him to have a certain position and yeah. be healthy and, and continue he's, to and eat he's, food. And he's good at it. Sure. And, and, of course, he also has the necessary, the requisite amount of trauma to not <laughs> care what other people yeah. say. He's had his head burned in a fire by his brother when he was mm -hmm. a kid. You're not going to be like, okay, I'm just going to be a happy person. Yeah. So um, Anyway, so I thought that was great that we you get to see all of that sort of come to fruition in this guy. Um, mm -hmm. We get to see what it'd be like to, you know, if the Hound could live a domestic life for a brief <laughs> he, period of time. He tried so hard. Yeah, and he did. And we saw that whole arc happen of, you see him initially sort of resistant to that, to this new way of living. And then he really embraces it and he's 
staying out late to cut wood for the villagers yeah. instead of eating his soup and then what a guy the world comes in and says you know what you you were right hounds you do yeah. have to sort of be well, a little bit of a bad guy in this world ian mcshane's character who people have been waiting for all season because they knew he was cast mm. uh, he his arc is basically exactly the same as the hounds mm. right it's it's a it's a foil for the character so you look at him and he sees like this is what happens when you stay he peaceful is that he he said the same thing right he said i've done such awful things i have to repent i'm going to come here and be peaceful and look where it got him mm-hmm. right and the hound is now looking that right in the face yep. and he's mad because he's like maybe if there weren't people out there doing this crap these people could have lived happily right so he's picking up the axe like yeah. a, like a mofo yeah. it was wonderful to see him again and i'm super happy that he's back on the show yeah because uh he's pretty awesome he's cool yeah i'm in very cool done yeah, they should burn more people's faces. Joel, what else did you like this episode? Well, young people, like the young girl who is uh, taking over Bear Island mm. and telling people what for. Yeah. They're all well and good. Sure. But there's something to be said for the power of old people. Oh, they're sassy. Uh, Oleana, the grandmother of Marjorie Tyrell, she has been uh, given it every episode for about four seasons. Her name is Oleana. Yes. Not Old Leanna. Old Leanna. Yeah, just to be clear. Yes. Yeah. In this episode, uh, I loved the scenes with her and Marjorie. She's so kind of like angry at her. Marjorie slips her this little note with a picture of the Rose of High Garden. Mm-hmm. And that Cersei scene was fantastic. She mm-hmm. just lays into her. Yes. <laughs> yes. What is the line? She's like, I don't, I don't know if you're the, mo- you might be the most vile person I've ever yes. met. I'm not, I'm not even really I'm not sure. sure. I'm really but old. <laughs> you're like, you're up there. Yeah, you're you're really on the right. list, top you're five. Pretty much. For yeah. sure. I think a lot I'm of the, the older the... characters in the show. Um, share this characteristic that they've been living hard lives for a long time and they don't have the patience for this nonsense it's not like they're not playing the game but they are playing a little bit of a different game especially amongst the noble born you still have old people like Pycelle who are like tricky and sneaky sort of or they're just there depends what you think he's up to but um, I definitely agree. It's like if you've if you've been noble for a long time, you just you're just tired of people trying to take your stuff, right? You're like, can't we just have all of our stuff and take from other people? Yeah, is that so hard? Yeah. And of course, the other example that we want to talk about was the blackfish, and he's just as silver tongued and uh, clever and like not taking any BS from the Frey men or from Jamie. Anyway, old people. Old people. They're good. They are good. Yeah. Maybe more of them should just pop up, except they're all getting killed, a la the Hound narrative. The swords don't get them, time will. Mm. <laughs> so, Brian, we liked lots of things. We did. It was an amazing episode. It's I was, good. My heart was going like this. Like a gorilla. My heart was going like a gorilla. Mm-hmm. What didn't you like about the episode? <sighs> the area scene. The what? area scene. What? What? Like, what do you there, mean? We've, you didn't seen like that. The, we've seen these two characters duel each other a, a bunch of times yeah, that, that's we've, practice it, exactly like show it to me in real life like you've, we've it's like we've been waiting for these two guys to finally have an opportunity to let loose we know that they hate each other we get the get-go in the last episode so, the, Hagar the, saying, the relationship like, yeah is is over we don't have to be friendly with each other anymore where is it what where about okay so i know you had said it's like oh this the, the end scene or the end shot is sort of cool of uh, Arya walking through the the people, the crowd, mm. and you're and you're thinking, or maybe she's thinking, could be any of these people. Yeah, she right? keeps looking at their eyes. Well, let's right. see that. What about like a cool scene? Where, like Arya, okay, like she gets stabbed first. That happens. That's fine. She runs into the crowd, and then it's like she just sees these blur of faces. And every time she is, she sees a face, like it's a it's a stranger, and then it's like takes her face off, and it's that girl, and it's like how is she moving around quickly, and who is like, who, and, like, and she's stabbing her, and she's like something. This Arya narrative started and then left us. It's supposed to be the cliffhanger. Yeah. But nobody thinks Arya's gonna die. That scene that you asked for, it's gonna come. It's gonna be in the next episode. Oh, but like, why didn't they put it into the episode? Why didn't they tack that on? They could have had this like 10 minute finale of like Arya going through the crowd, yeah. just like you're saying, right? right? All those faces, all those faces, except instead of having the episode end and they just lose all the tension that was built up from that moment. My thought was that sort of something like this would happen structurally is that there would be a fight, but it would not end. That neither of them would kill either of them. Right. And then uh, Arya would escape, but injured, and this other woman would just stalk her across the lands right, forever. Yeah. Like we'd forget that she was out there, right. and then she would just show up somewhere. <laughs> yeah. And that's where I thought it was going to go. And they, I think that's what they're going to do. 
but they it, it doesn't matter. They introduced some interesting ingredients for this what could have been a real cool fight scene and we didn't. See <laughs> Joel, that was my con. What's yours? I think the one thing that really kind of threw me for a loop was that the soldiers who come in to invade the Hound's peace parade uh, and they are they are from the Brotherhood, as it's right. mentioned. So once again, this is like what we mentioned last episode uh, like about the Brotherhood without banners from season two. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's a long the time. The dudes who live in the cave. The dudes who live in the cave uh-huh. and, and whatnot. And this wasn't any of those characters, but it's nope. the members of their Brotherhood. And this Brotherhood is supposed to be about... It's called the Brotherhood Without Banners. And the mm-hmm. idea is these houses should all go to hell. It, like, we need some form of meritocracy or we should... It's like a Robin Hood type setup. But then, what is happening in this scene? Really different sort of guys. It's, they're really sort of different. I didn't even Who know when they came out. I thought they, lo- they looked... They seemed very official. Mm-hmm. Like, they looked like a bunch of guys who came from the castle around yeah. the corner. Or, or like Lannister. In, in what they were wearing. They, kind of and Lann- they were red, right? They thought they were kind of Lannister-y. At first, I found that really off-putting. But then I think maybe that's the point. I think there's going to be similar um, moments, structural moments moving forward that we're getting to the end of, of the series. We can't really introduce new stuff at this time. Yeah. So you couldn't, it couldn't just be like some other group or some other roving bad no, guys. No. Like it has to be people that we know. And if they needed, if they felt like they needed to shift these dudes a little bit to get them what they needed to be for this episode, then well, I would be fine with that. And as the books are over, the story that we have with the band, with the uh, the Brotherhood without banners, is also over. Right. And while they're very different and they're they're more important in the in the books. Uh, they have free reign to do with them what they will yeah. because there's no textual evidence to say that they are not like this right sure. now. Sure. So, Joel, where do you think this is going from here? <sighs> Everywhere. I mean, what do you say? There's so many storylines going on at once in Game of Thrones, but the one that I always think of uh, is anytime somebody sends a raven or mm-hmm. sends a letter, mm-hmm. it's always a, something that I think is uh, they would not take the time to show it unless it was particularly relevant to what's going on in the future. Of course. So here we've got Sansa. She has realized that they do not have enough soldiers. She has a little uh, ace in the hole in that she's got Littlefinger and his armies at her behest, Mm -hmm. supposedly. Mm -hmm. Um, And she is now taking it upon herself to send a letter. Um, The last time that we saw some letters sent, it was Theon and Robb Stark, and everything ended terribly. Didn't go well. Uh, That was my thought when she started writing it. Um, Not necessarily that Littlefinger might betray her, although he might betray her. Just that we've seen ravens end up in the wrong hands before. and Shot down. Yeah, my thought was that next episode... um, John will end up chastising her because they'll find out that she leaked the plans of the enemy accidentally. Right. I don't well, know, but that was my that was my thought when she was you writing. Can, you can picture Ramsay and his men shooting the, the raven out of the sky. Yeah. Right? It has to fly past Winterfell, more or less, right. to get down to where the Vale soldiers are. So uh, it wouldn't be too far. Also, we have not seen him in two episodes. So who knows what he's been up to, right? It's been, <laughs> it's been all quiet in the Winterfell front. That is definitely going to climax of the season, I think. It has to be a big siege of Winterfell. Everything that stretches towards how that battle is going to play out, mm. I don't know. There's so many important people involved, but that's what I'm looking forward to most. Cool. That is all the breath we have for words this week. This is Fan vs. Fan, Game of Thrones 607, the best one of them all, according to me. If you like everything that's going on with the video, especially my hair, you can subscribe to the YouTube channel right here. And if you like my hair instead, then you can follow us on Twitter instead of following... Or do... I shouldn't tell them not to do one or the other. No, okay. If you like my hair better, then follow us on Twitter. We if you like a, his hair better, then subscribe to us on YouTube. But it could be like a contest, right? It could be like, which one's going to get more and people vote because... Please do both. You should do both. But if you like my hair better, follow us on Twitter. And if you like my hair better, do YouTube. But do both. But do, but do YouTube. Kick to my